פשוט מוריי ורבותיי, פשוט הדרה, the parasha of this week is the parasha when the Shevatim with Yosef they meet together. When Yosef had Sadiq he told his brothers, Ani Yosef. As you know, they sold him as a slave because of the dreams that he had and because they were very jealous of him and because the father he showed more love to Yusuf more to the others so they were very jealous of him so they sold him and they become the king and you know all the dreams that he had they become true and now they are meeting him they did not recognize him because when they sold him he had no beard now he has a beard so he don't recognize it the question is the Torah said that Yusuf Asadik was looking like his father now that his father is old with, now that Yusuf Asadik he has a beard so of course everybody will uh, recognize this is Yusuf but they did not recognize him for them it's not Yusuf but now my friend when he told them Ali Yusuf I am Yusuf there is a Midrash who said that they wanted to kill him. They, could, they wanted to kill him. And there was a Malach who came and they pushed them not to kill him. The question is, we saw the Torah first, how they did not recognize him, that he was looking like his, like his father. And second, the Midrash said that when they went to Egypt, they were looking for Yosef and they said even if we have to risk our life to save Yosef we will save him and now he is Yosef he's in front of them and they want to kill him it's not doesn't make any sense on one hand they went to Egypt they saw how much the father he suffered 20 years that he did not see Yosef now there is Yosef Baruch Hashem, he's the king. Baruch Hashem, his, his dreams, they come through. Baruch Hashem, now the happiness, it should be complete. Now they can, they can go to the father to tell him, you say he's alive. And right now they want to kill him. <coughs> Abu Tai, my friend, this is, this is what the Torah said. They were so ashamed. My friend, you have to know something. I'm sure that the Shvatim, from the beginning when they saw Yosef and he was against them, they recognized that he, they saw that he looked like his, uh, like the father. He looked like Yosef. But for them, Yosef, it, it doesn't exist. For them, it's like my friend, when you hit somebody, for you that somebody, it doesn't exist. You know how much we have to, to be working on our midot to take out the sinah that we may have against somebody. Look, the brothers of Yusuf at Sadiq, so much they hated. If Yusuf at Sadiq recognized him, how did he not recognize him? Because he couldn't stand him. A man like this, even that he is a king, we don't want to recognize him. But they were always uncertain. But now that they, they are certain, I am Yusuf. So for them, that kind of Yusuf, we don't like it. That kind of Yusuf, that he had such, such dreams to be the king on us, we cannot accept him, we cannot recognize him. Even that we have to kill him now. For the Shvatim, they want a Yusuf without the dreams. Not a Yusuf with the dreams that the dreams come true. You know, my friend, I would like to tell you this something. I know somebody that always, always I tried to make shalom between him and his brother. His brother, Baruch Hashem, he become wealthy man. And uh, this one, he's not, he's not rich, he, he's not a panasa. And I, I always he criticized his brother, the rich brother. And a lot of times I told him, why? Uh, he said, Rabbi David, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't stand where we were 
two brothers, we were born in the same house, the same parents. Why he's rich and I am not? I told him it's Hashem. We are all Shiva Kabut. It's a Kashu decide who to be rich, who to be poor. It's such a decide who to be president or not to be president. Why? What? He couldn't. In Mamash, it's yeah. But when he passed away, the rich man, so the poor man, the, the, his brother, I saw him in the cemetery. I told him, ah, you are here now. You're happy now. Now there is no brother. He was crying. Yeah. But what I, this is exactly why, uh, what happened when Yosef told him, I am Yosef, even that he spoke Hebrew, even that he showed him that he's, uh, he, had, he had Brit Mila, the, the Shvatim, for them, no, this is, that not the kind of Yosef that we were looking for. That was not, not the kind of Yosef that we, we want to save. A Yosef that he had dreams to become our king, that we don't accept. And now they wanted to kill him. When the Ma'ach came and pushed them, so they understand that it's Hashem who decides all, all this. My friend, I would like to finish with uh, something. Today is the Hilula of a big tzaddik, Rabbi David ben Baruch, Arab Shalom. I don't know if you heard of him, but uh, today is uh, it's his Hilula. There is a story about him with my father. This tzaddik he passed away about uh, 150. He was uh, the generation of Rabbi Chaim Pinto, the first, maybe 200 years ago. And the story was that, uh, you know, my name is David. I am named on him. I named about uh, on him, Rabbi David Baruch, Rabbi David Ben Hazan, and uh, David Amelech, Arab Shalom, and Khananya, Rabbi Khananya, coming from Marrakesh. My father, Arab Shalom, used to always, every day, used to light the candles of the tzaddikim. 50 candles every day. So, uh, with, with oil. So one morning, and I remember every morning before we go to the Talmud Torah, I was at the time six year old. My brother Abichai was seven year old. We used to help him because he used to go on a chair to light the candles, oil, and then he light all the candles. But when he came to the one, the candle of Rabbi David Ben Baruch, he had no oil anymore. He had only a candle. So he laid the candle, but the candle fell on him. So his suit became dirty, and with the, the fire, he burnt, he, he burnt his hand. So I will, I will never forget. My father, Rabbi Shalom, he looked at the, you know, I don't know if, uh, if you, if you've been in Morocco, uh, all synagogues, they have, uh, they, you know, they had the Kosot Shul Tzadikim, glasses of, uh, I would say Kosot. Huh? Chandelier. Cup, yes, cup of Tzadikim that used to light uh, behind them. And, uh, and they used to light. And uh, then my father, Arab Shalom, he looked at the cup of Rabbi David Baruch. He started to talk to him. This is, uh, I, I light your candle, and you burn me. You know, it's, uh, in life you have to talk to a Kalush when, when you light candles of tzaddikim, you pray. When, uh, you know, we have emuna, that we pray to Hashem. Yesterday, somebody, when I told him, you have to light a candle of Abimei Baroness, he, he could understand. So I had to explain to him. Well, I don't know if he understood or not. But Baruch Hashem, we were born in Morocco with emunat hachamim, emunat of tzaddikim. Whatever they tell us to do, we do. Uh, I will never forget my father always. Hashem, Be'ezat Hashem, everything, Be'ezat Hashem. We're brought up like this, with this kind of emunah. So, my brother, Bichayim, he told my father, Papa, it's not fair. You know, the tzaddikim are alive. You light all the cups with oil, and Rabbi David and Baruch with, uh, with a candle. It's not, uh, it's not chashuv, it's not, uh, it's not uh, kavod. So my father told him, well, I did not have uh, oil left. So Abi Chaim told him, if you want me, I go to get you oil from the shop. I remember 
that my father Arab Shalom, he was waiting in the synagogue and I was waiting for the oil to come. Then I became, my brother came with the oil and my father he lights the candle of Rabbi David Merv of oil. So my brother Rabbi Chaim told my father, Papa, I'm sure today you will receive a new suit and you will get a lot of money. The Zechot of Rabbi David Merv he will pay you for what you did now. My father is smiled at him and then Rabbi Chaim told him, but if you receive the money, don't forget us. Give us something. That was the story. After the day, we closed the door, we, we used to live in the Mela. That, that's it finished. We had to go to bed. At about 12 o'clock in the night, somebody was knocking at the door. Somebody was knocking at the door. And my father, uh, at 12 o'clock at night, uh, what's going on? My mother, she was afraid. So, my father, he, he woke up, he stand up, and he went, we went behind him, which we were children. The house of Rabbi Chaim Pindo. And uh, my father, oh, who is it? Mr. Isimini. Ah, Mr. Isimini opened the door and he had in his hand a suit. <coughs> he said, This is from my boss. He, he wanted to offer you this suit. Please, if you can see if it suits you. And my father, Rabbi Shalom, he, he saw the number. He said, This, this is uh, my, my size. And he gave him an envelope. We well, were behind him. My brother Rabbi Chaim, he looked at my father. Papa? <laughs> Papa? I didn't give us something, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> but he didn't give it. But just to tell you why I tell this story, I tell the story because my father Rabbi Shalom, at the moment, listen to this, when my brother, he told him, my brother was only seven years old, when he told him, Papa, what you did is not fair, it's not correct. To light all the cups of tzaddikim with oil and the cup of Rabbi David Van Baruch with, with a candle, it's not correct. If I could tell him, shut your mouth, this is not your business. But he listened to him and he did what he told him. This is Imuna. Imuna, a good midot is always recognized. When it's true, recognize. That's what we learned from this parasha. We learned something that uh, no good. When the Shvatim, they saw the reality, they saw the truth that Yosef is the one, he's the king, they should recognize him quick. They should tell him, no, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. Why? Because it, it was very hard for them to recognize the one who had the dreams, and now the dreams are true. They come true. They are, look, you see, Oh, what I said, oh, what I told you, look, it happened. So, it's from Hashem. That's why Yusuf had said to them, hey, brothers, don't be afraid. It's, it's Hashem. It's from Hashem. It's a Kashmir who decides who to be rich. It's Hashem who decides who to be president. It's Hashem who decides who to have a house, who to have a car, you or not you. It's Hashem who decides. This is what we have to learn. The Shratim, the mistake that he did, right away you should recognize yourself. The dreams that he had, they come true. That's it. Shalom. That's it. No, they wanted to kill him. This is a Tzara. This is a Tzara. So what we learned from the story of, uh, of the Yosef and his brother, what we learned, you have to recognize the Emet. When you see the Emet is coming, recognize it. And besides this, you have to recognize, you have to Teach yourself whatever ha whatever happened, it's come from a Who good or bad, everything comes from, from Akashu. Today is the hero of the Rabbi David Baruch Shalom. May his merit is a good be with you. Amen. Amen.